Hello everyone, welcome back to a very special episode of Dark Souls Prepare to Die Long Edition. By special, I mean it was after, the, it's the episode after we did something cool. That's never happened before. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and light this bonfire. As you can see, made of bones. It's like a little, little fire poker sword type thing. And hey, a mushroom. So we can totally ignore this mushroom if we want. And we could just keep keep on walking. But I'm not going to do that. I'm a nice boy. Hello, mushroom. Well, look at this one. From what faraway age hast thou come? Thy scent is very human indeed. I don't look like a human. not intolerable. Ah, Princess Dusk's savior. Thine aura is precisely as she described. I thank thee deeply for rescuing her highness. But Princess Dusk is here no longer, snatched away by that horrifying primeval human. And so I must ask, couldst thou once more play the savior? Oh, for she's. Thank you. I am Elizabeth, guardian of this sanctuary. Something of a godmother to Princess Dusk. I shall assist thee to my utmost. For I am one with the sorceries of all the seal. Ooh, an item vendor, mayhaps? Ooh, she's got some things. Grab that tattered cloth. You know it. Short sword. I think we already have one. It's just plus five. That's why it says we have zero. Uh, we don't really need any of this. It's... Ooh, binoculars! Ah! I'm gonna buy the binoculars. The flame. <laughs> Thanks for letting the flames guide thee. Or guide me, I guess. So, yeah, uh, Elizabeth was once the guardian of this struggling. sanctuary. No, I'm not struggling. Not yet. I was earlier, but... Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth is the guardian of the sanctuary. She was... Um, I probably should have paid closer attention if I'm going to recap everything. Uh, she's someone to Princess Dusk. <laughs> Basically, we saved Dusk from that crystal golem, and she knew our scent based on how Princess Dusk described us, which I think is pretty ballin'. Um, so yeah, we're just going to take a quick view here. This place might look a little familiar. Got this bridge here. Got the running water below. Got some Colosseum type thing up there. Ooh, there's a, another familiar site. Looks almost like uh, an Orlando or something like that. Or maybe we're back where Firelink Shrine is. Something, something similar. Now, I will say for the people that already know that this is just Darkroot Basin in the past. The specific area that we're in right now is, I believe this is like where you would fight Sif. Did I just say Sith? Sif, the dog, which we fought, which I'm very sad about. And if we did this first, which is pretty hard to do, I'll be honest. Because this place is pretty hard. Um, if we did that first, then we would get an extra scene with Sif where we pet him before we fight him. And it's very sad, and I no, oh, I want to cry. Um, Royal Wood. Uh, a few things have changed in the time between um that's one of them <laughs> in the time between uh Ulysseal and and the present or i guess the present for us at least um the the treants used to be these like little farmers these village workers or maybe these are like semi absorbed by the abyss semi um i don't want to say absorbed tainted if you will this little walkway up here wasn't originally here i guess in the in the future is no longer there um again it's just just to it's to add more entrances i believe to the uh to this upper area but you can also go left and go that way as well there's a couple more enemies on that side we are going to take this slow we're going to kind of try to defeat enemies one by one learn their strats hey uh, a guardian of some kind ain't that fun oh i'm gonna die i thought that was it Oof. Oh, I forgot about that R2. It's so funny because I'm pretty sure we have one of those. And I knew about the R2. It's got like a second move where he slams the thing out of the ground. But you live and you learn. <laughs> it's very sad, but here we are. Can I warp to the other one? I cannot. That's kind of sad. I don't even know if I can warp at all from where I'm at right now, but... The walk of shame, the walk of shame. 
Let's do it. I know someone in the comments said that I would have a lot of trouble with the uh, <laughs> the entire DLC because of how little health I have. I'm going to try my best to offset that with equipment, good equipment, and hopefully skill. Because <laughs> I put so much, uh, so much, so many points, I should say, into strength that uh, so I could wield all these bigger weapons that I didn't really put much into, uh, into, vi into vit vitality. Let's actually see what are my stats right now. I just kind of did them a little randomly. So we got 12 vit, 12 attunement, which again doesn't matter that much. That's just fire spells. Uh, endurance 25, pretty average. 50 strength, which is good. Uh, 20 dex, which is okay. 18 intelligence. I'm not really using it, so that kind of makes sense. I will eventually uh, be, be bumping everything up to be pretty even, so I can use lots of equipment. Uh, and then Faith 30, again, for our uh, Divine Scaling and such. Moonlight Greatsword uh, is is one that doesn't scale in anything but Intelligence. So and if the rules were reversed and I had 50 Strength, then I'd probably be using that. But um, Lots of things that take a lot of Strength and just have, like, minor scaling in other things. The Divine Straight Sword, again, or sorry, Divine Sunlight Straight Sword is one of them. It has DD in everything else. Or sorry, in strength and dex, I should say, not everything else. Uh, but C and faith, so that helps a lot. Obviously, you can see our physical damage: one ten plus twenty six. It's red because it's lower than what we have now. Magic scaling: one thirty six plus fifty four. The reason the fifty four is higher than the twenty six is because the scaling is better in faith than it is in strength. So, just a little bit of a rundown for you. Now, I will say, she did ask us if we were struggling. There is a dialogue you can get. Struggling, are we? If you if talk to her. If there's anything I can do, never hesitate to ask. Thou shalt see further on. An abyss was begat of the ancient beast, and threatens to swallow the whole of Ulysses. Knight Artorius came to stop this, but such a hero has nary a murmur of dark. Without doubt he will be swallowed by the abyss, overcome by its utter blackness. Indeed, the abyss may be unstoppable. Still, I have faith that Princess Dusk may be rescued yet. Thou shalt see. Okay, so. May the fl May the fl To you too, Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> so, like she was talking about Artorius the Abyss Walker, known in our future um, as someone who walked the abyss, defeated Manus the primeval man. The primeval dog, dude. I meant dog is not in, as in like a poochie way, as in oh god, as in like a like yo, my dog, my dude. The primeval homie, Manus. Hello there. Why did you do so much damage to me? Why did you fall just to do that? Seems a little silly, doesn't it? Aha! I'm gonna have to kindle that uh that other bonfire as well, so I don't have to walk back every time. I need my twenty Estus. I'm garbage at this game. You guys should know this by now. Now those guardians here. Or these uh, guys with the stone axes. They are made of stone. So I wouldn't imagine that... Uh, I, I feel like magic would do more damage to them than anything else. Maybe not. Maybe just physical. Please don't. I... I... I am trying to kill you. <laughs> How dare you stab me multiple times? I swear, my brain, <laughs> when I'm holding the block button, it's like, well, I'm blocking, so nothing could go wrong. But I get interrupted before the block animation, like, between that and that. I get interrupted, and I'm still holding it. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, the next one's got to be blocked. Okay, well, the next one's got to be blocked. I just need to pay more attention. And also, where are my fucking glasses so I can see what's going on? I was playing Dark Souls Remastered, Dark Souls, Dark Souls Remastered the other day, and I, I was like, man, it was a new area I haven't been to very often. I think it was Lost Isleth, and I was like, man, this is so hard to fucking like see where I'm going because I'm not using muscle memory. It's not a place I've been many times. I've just been there once because I've only beat the game once. Now I beat the game twice. Hey, would you look at me? But my glasses make such a big difference. Why am I not using them all the time? <laughs> Because I'm stupid, that's why. But that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to stagger him with one blow. And then attack him with the next. And what did I fail to do? Exactly that. 
All right. Okay. I want you first to die. And then I'm going to deal with you slowly. Do your stupid move. Oh, boy. I don't know how I dodged that, honestly. See, he's slow. What's the problema? Oh, there you go. There you go. So you can get his entire armor set, which is basically just the stone, stone guardian armor, just a little different. They just redesign things every so slightly, and we're to assume, okay, maybe the magic did that. You enjoying your juke and jive there, my friend? You just want me to backstab you? I'll do it. There you go. Nice and painless. For me. Hopefully painless for him. Or hopefully not. I don't know. God, this place is just so pretty. Honestly, I love forest locations when they're darker. Like this. And then you just see like one spot of sunlight coming through. Oh, it's just so nice. I'm trying to take in and appreciate the scenery a little bit more. Because man, so much work goes into this freaking game. These games in general, I guess. Come on. Bam. We'll fight this guy and we'll appreciate the scenery a little bit more. Okay. All right. I believe I dodged that, sir. Thanks for playing, though. Anything else chasing me right now? Okay, now we're good. There we go. Oh, it didn't kill me. Yeah. Oh, that would have fucking killed me. Jesus Christ. So scurry. It came from above my shield, didn't it? It can't it came from above my shield. So <sighs> And then like with any Dark Souls game, you hit the boiling point. Where now instead of defeating every enemy slowly as I go through I want to just fucking run right past them. Which I think we shall do. At least once. And then before every episode, I'll just clear this fucking bullshit place out first. <laughs> now, you can parry these uh, these farmers here. Which is kind of fun to see them flail about. Because they do kind of fall a lot. And it's kind of cute, kind of funny. It's cute and funny because they don't have faces. I think if they were... Like, it's, it's Uncanny Valley type of thing. If they were a little bit more humanoid, like, if they had faces, if they had, like, flesh <laughs> instead of wood, if they were less Groot, more... Um, not Groot. <laughs> more, uh, not... Uh, what's his name? Oh, my God. Who's the guy? Aldridge. <laughs> the, uh, from Dark Souls 3. Aldridge of the Abyss? Aldridge of the Deep? I can't remember. But he's a nasty boy. He's just like a mound of flesh. He nasty. He very nasty. I should stop using the word nasty now. But man, look at this place. This huge coliseum. In tatters. Like clearly run down. Oh, you can see at the top there. That's all the abyss kind of taking hold up there. I'm going to throw... Oh, I already have my binoculars on. Yeah, things getting smelly over there. But you can see, uh, what can you see from here? Aside from that, I think this might be semi-impossible space. Or at least we can't see where we're going down there. Oh, no, yeah, we can. Oh, it's blocked, but you can see a little shimmer through that piece of grass there. That's an item waiting for us. Uh, maybe not. Maybe by the way it's glowing, it could just be one of these, um, one of these crystal plant things. Speaking of crystal plants, that's very pretty. Ulusio is very light focused, I feel like. A lot of their sorceries are based on illusion and and things like that. Oh wow, thank you so much. You shouldn't have, really. <laughs> and we have some of them too. I guess we could take a peeks. A little peeksy. So all the Ulusio ones, instead of being all blue, they're usually gray what uh, sorry, gray, yellow, orangish. 
Yeah, like this isn't even a... These aren't even Ulusiel ones. I guess these are dark Ulusiel sorceries, but anyway. Hidden body. Ancient sorcery from the lost land of Ulusiel. I found it. Turns a body nearly invisible. Although perfectly in perfect invisibility is unachievable due to the risk of dissipation. Light dissipation? I don't know. The caster need only stand still for a moment to blend into environs with astounding camouflage. I guess they hit the character limit there. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's hidden body. So something that you'll see from this is they're all very uh, very passive. They're not um, they're not combat oriented. I should say. Ancient sorcery, lost land of Ulusiel, repair repair equip equipped weapons and armorers. This sorcery was a part of everyday life in Ulusiel. It affects. Its effects resemble repair powder, which must have found its way onto the culture of this lost land or into. And then cast light. Cast a bright light upon surroundings. That's very useful uh, if you don't have the sunlight maggot or if you don't have that um, skull lantern as well, especially for places like the Tomb of the Lost Giants. This light producing sorcery is elementary, but nonetheless demonstrates the achievements in mysticism of Ulusil. Such magic has not been developed even in Vinheim. Then we got the chameleon one. So this, I wish I could show this off right now. It's a really cool one. I think in Dark Souls 3, they use it a lot more. Um, and it's uh, actually a, a side story point is uh, someone that uses chameleon. <clears throat> Transform into something inconspicuous. A separate a separate stealth spell from Hidden Body. A skilled stealth so sorcerer must be aware of his or her surroundings and of which objects are prime candidates for imitation. <clears throat> I'm having a hard time reading today, guys, so I apologize for that, but... Basically, if we if we were to use it here, it would either transfer transform us into something like this light post, a pile of bricks, like a shrub, something like that. And it's really good for like PvP play because you can just kind of hide in the corner here. And if that person doesn't know the uh, the environment too well, you're gonna get the jump on them. So very cool stuff. All right, what do we got around here? More enemies down there. You can kind of just follow the lights. That'll show you where to go. Game design at its greatest. But you also will think it's an item. Like that up there is an item for sure. And it has the same kind of resonance. It's a little slower, mind you, on the left side. But on the right side, you can see that thing's pulsating a lot more akin to this uh, glowing plant here. Cool little thing that, if you again, if you stop and look at it, you'll notice. All right. Get out of here ASAP. There's a big ambush over there. We've already been through this area, basically, just not with these enemies on it. Hello. Get a nice juicy look at the Cyclops dragon here. <laughs> I thought I was going to miss him for a second. He definitely stops and looks at you uh, menacingly as opposed to um, the Hellkite dragon that just and runs away. But you can see here a big crag, if you will. Is there an enemy? I can hear a bow. I can hear something going on, but... Oh, hello! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Die, please. Die, please. Did you die all the way? Perfect. Thank you so much. Christ Almighty. I was like, I know, I know that sound anywhere. Hey, because of that, though, found an item up there. That's cool. And then there's the one back there as well. I will go for it. And a couple down there, so... Yeah, this this place down there will be important later on. I can hear him coming. I just can't see him coming. Oh, God. I hope he just walks over the cliff and falls. That would be ideal. Hey, Crystal Lizard. Hey. Oh, no. Oh, thank God. That was a close one. Got them chunks. But that also stopped us from exploring up there, which I guess was the point. Uh, yeah, if you fall into this area, you die. Obviously, it's a big chasm. I've I've fallen off the bell of fucking awakening. Or that church and died, even though it doesn't look like you should. There is actually a cleverly hidden kill box there. Oh. I think there's actually a video. If uh, There's a video that Illusory Wall made about it. About the kill box of... Uh, just kill boxes in general. Kill planes, how they work. Uh, but there, there's one point he makes about the Bell of Awakening. Or the Church of Awakening. Church of the Bell of Awakening? I don't know. 
you should be able to, in all honesty, after fighting the gargoyles, you should be able to drop down. Like, that isn't an area that should kill you. It should leave you with very little health, but it shouldn't kill you. Um, but they put a kill kill plane there just so... Uh, for speed running purposes, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, also, we got one of my favorite... Ooh! Ooh, no! One of my favorite chest pieces in the game. Black iron armor. Tarkus's chest piece. I believe it uses Twinkling Titanite to upgrade, but I just want to show it off real quick because it is so cool looking. Like, some people might think it's kind of plain. I don't know. I'm I'm all about it, though. I love that front piece, like the, the neck cover, neck guard, basically. It reminds me of uh, if you've played Dead Space, um, Isaac's armor. It always has a little thing like that. I think that's where his mask comes from, though, so it's obviously it's got more utility than this, but... Ooh, Crystal Lizard. Ooh, and a little trick for you guys. I want to see if this works in the PC version. It works in Dark Souls Remastered. If you... If a, cr a Crystal Lizard runs away and you quit out and come back, he actually respawns where he's supposed to. So it gives you kind of a chance to... Uh... Oh, God. To get him! Oh, boy! Oh, boy! Oh, boy. That's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to take care of the, the, the Ents. The farm people. Oh, fuck. That black iron armor. Oh, he stabbed me in the backola. Okay. <laughs> I really want... You can see off in the distance there's an item there and there's a little structure. That's the shortcut to get back to... Uh, to what's it called? To the sanctuary a little quicker. I think we're just going to tackle it on the next episode. But, uh, oh, an item. I never noticed. But once again, White Tide Night Chunk, of course. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys leaving your comments, liking the videos as well. Like, you, you guys are all pretty good about that. Uh, and I've been getting a pretty consistent amount of views throughout the, uh, throughout the episodes. If you ever go back and watch them, um, you could always let me know uh, things that I said that I was going to do that I just completely didn't. Uh, it Just if you notice anything. I'm not saying it's mandatory, obviously, but it would help out. Also, it fluffs the view counter, too, so that's nice as well. But if you have been enjoying the series, please let me know. Uh, th those who have so far, I do really appreciate that. And I'm just kind of rambling because I'm tired and hungry and I can eat now. I'm doing my fasting thing. And it has just... Well, it is going to end in seven minutes. But if I start making food now, then I can eat it by the time I'm done. With my sliced hand. No corn this time, I promise. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. King Bob out. Bye-bye. King Bob, ruler of the playground.